Let's let's get Jazz in here a second. As all Jazz, how you doing, my man? I'm good. How you doing? Go a little closer there. I'm Big O, man. How you doing? You doing all right? I'm good, I'm good man. I'm happy to be here. All right, Matt. Well, we're happy to have you here. So, how you feeling about this upcoming season? Oh, I feel amazing, man. Like I, I haven't felt better in my life. Did, do you feel more pressure when you get traded to this city compared to where you were only because you know our large Bahamian community and you got an opportunity to represent like nobody else? I wouldn't say I feel more pressure. I feel like I feel more like at home. Okay. I feel more at home when I come to Miami. You know, this is my type of culture. This is my type of vibe. So every time I'm at home and I think of home, I think of Miami. So when I got traded here, it wasn't more of a pressure, it was more of a happiness to me to be here. So let me ask you, sir, if I'm correct, I think I did this. Okay, yes, exactly. You gotta explain this to me. You come out of the Bahamas and they put your ass in Wichita, Kansas. Now that that's that's shell shock above shell shock above shell shock. So tell me what was the culture shock first? For you going from Bahamas to Wichita, the snow was the culture shock <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, but my parents didn't want me to stay close to home. They always want me to be far away from home. I was supposed to come to American Heritage, actually, high school, and I ended up going to Wichita, Kansas, to a prep school and playing baseball and basketball and football up there. And I mean, it was weird for me too to go to Wichita, Kansas. Yeah. Like I was. I saw that and I go, wait a minute, Bahamas to Wichita. It was a last minute change. You know, like when you're in ba in baseball, we have last minute trades that come out of nowhere. Right, right, right. That right. was basically it. Cause I was packing my bags to go to American Heritage. And then uh, two weeks later, actually you're gonna go to Wichita, so. So so Jazz, was there like any regrets early on? Like what the hell am I doing here? Oh. That kind of stuff? Oh, a hundred percent. Really? I got up there, it was snowing, it was cold, like, haven't played against some like amazing competition yet, so I was like, oh, I'm here for no reason. <laughs> and then we started playing in like national events. And I was like, oh, never mind. Okay. This this is really this is really gonna teach me how to be strong with everything I do. You know, it was playing in cold weather, which you're gonna have to do when you're playing in October, November. Well the shockers go to right. the College World Series all the time, right? right. Hasn't Wichita even won the na the, the college? They did. They yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so they yeah they have actually right? their basketball team has come on this yeah. team as yeah, well. well. But that's fine. In winter you're stuck in a damn gym, so that's all right. True. That's all right. So so <laughs> how the hell so it, do they have indoor baseball facilities over there or what's the deal? I mean the shockers do. <laughs> they do, huh? Yeah, they do. Um, we did, as, as a high school, we did have an indoor facility that we worked out at. So, I mean, we had good travels, good indoor facilities. Like, we would, we would drive from Wichita, Kansas, to Tennessee to play in the national tournament every year. I mean, we were a really good school. I would not, I wouldn't down my school at all. We, we came third in the national championships. So, I mean, I was pretty fine with it like going there and playing and competing against guys that have been like that have been in the big leagues now before like well I'm let's just happy let's think about this look how dedicated they are that they'll go to the bahamas to find talent right so you, you think about that that's that's how studly that that area is about baseball how they feel about the sport that's right you know that that's also the way you really got to look at it because so the funny part about it uh, about me going to Kansas that he saw me play in the Little League World Series that year in 2010 and in 2010 I was 12 and he I was, was like say well, U13s right yeah I right. was 12 wow yeah and then he came and he told me he was like yeah you're gonna go to American Heritage you know go to school and then two weeks later going to Kansas I was like where is Kansas? Did you know anything about American Heritage already? Because it's oh, a kick-ass school. So Albert Cartwright okay. was one of the guys. He played for the Phillies. Yeah. And Anton Richardson and my stepdad, my coach that coached me all the way up, uh, Jerron Sands, he played at American Heritage as well. So like all of the guys that were really good in the Bahamas that were like could have made it professional went to American Heritage. So that's where I was like, all right, I'm going to be another 
professional athlete from the Bahamas that goes to American Heritage. That was my looking at it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Jazz Chisholm, by the way, joining us here on the show. So what's the, what, what, what do you want to accomplish this year with the team? Personally. With the team, I just want to come up and help the team win. That's all I want to do. I want to win. I'm a big, com I'm a big competitor. All I think about is winning. If, it, if I could come up and just make a play, defensive play, and get no hits and help us to win, I would. That's how I would want to play. What does it say to you that they traded for you? And they gave up a pretty good player in Zach, who's a, who's a pretty good pitcher mm -hmm. uh, overall. They felt they had the pitching depth, but they needed that bat. So, and they want you to be that bad. What's that say to you that they traded for you? It's saying to me that they actually wanted, they wanted me here. And I feel really grateful that they want me here and want me to be a part of this group that's coming up because it's a really group coming up right now and I can see it and I'm watching it. Now that I'm here, I, I really can see it coming. And I'm telling you, it's, Marlins is going to win a championship in two or three years. I love that. That's uh, that's uh, that's what I like to hear about the about the Marlins getting it done. All right, so Jazz, the name Jazz. What's the what's the story behind it? Because it's such a cool name. So I'm wondering, what were your parents thinking? How did that come about? You want me to be honest with you? Yes. My grandma just was like, Jazz. That's it. It was just. I'm a junior, so. Ah, she named my dad Jazz, and my dad was like, "He's a junior." That's it. So it was just. Was there uh, a storyline why they named your dad Jazz? There's really not. They're Nothing. just like, Jazz. Like I know my kid's gonna be a smooth, little talented kid, and that's how they named my dad Jazz. So you felt like your whole life you had to be smooth because your name is Jazz. Right. It had to be that way. That's the only way it could be. Did you meet anybody outside of your dad in the Bahamas named Jazz? I've never met anybody named Jazz. Okay. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, in this country, you could find probably a couple, right? I, I have imagine. Not. But you have it. Okay. But I, I would no. But I, there has I mean, been a I've couple. I've met but... some Jasmines. Right, Jasmines. Jazzies. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Jazzies. I have never. I've Somebody never named met their a kid jazz. Jazzy. Yeah. J a z z i e. That's a, yeah, little, I've that's never, a little wacky. Right. I've never met a J-A-Z-Z, -Z, though. Okay. All right. So, uh, apparently, you've got uh, Derek Jeter on speed dial? Is that what it is? Not really speed dial. <laughs> I would not say that. I call the office okay. and ask if I could speak to him. <laughs> that's, it's not on speed dial. I like people that have their own personal space. So, wait a minute. So, you can't pull up the phone, you're hanging out with your buddies and go, watch, I'm going to call Jeter right now. Boom. I don't you, think I would you, ever and, do and that. And you call number two right there and then. I would never do that. No? No, I'm not the guy to do that. No? You think I'm he would hang up on you? No. No, right? He's, he's too, too good of a guy. He's too good of a guy, right? He's too good of a guy. I think he would, but I'm more of a guy that respects everybody's personal space. And I know that Mr. Jeter, he's always busy. So, I, I, I use my connects as in being a Marlins player and calling the office <laughs> call the office hey it puts you on Jeter. hold you got the elevator music going on you're way, I don't way, even way. mind it at all okay. if he gives me his time it's special to me in every way every time jazz does when you have a guy like that leading your organization and I think all of you know how he carried himself like mm -hmm. at an impeccable level like it's right. Like, it's very few people have carried themselves so perfectly. Is that a level of expectations when the guy that's running the team has his standard and he's kind of, and you know, however you are, you're expecting that next person to, you know, kind of live up to that standard. Well, with Mr. Jeter, I mean, with him. Mr. Jeter too, huh? Not Derek? I'm a I'm a back and forth guy. I call people Mr. Jeter. I call him Derek. I call him Derek Jeter. It's, okay. It goes with everything, but okay. with him, it's more of a he likes you to be yourself type of guy. Okay. And if you can carry yourself as professionally as he did, he did, he'll really respect it. But if if you could just be professional with everything you do he'll be fine with it. It's just not going overboard with a lot of stuff, you know? I got you. I got you. That's how he is, and I really respect it out of him, too. All right, so, Jazz, you were at a cold place for a long time. Has your blood already thinned out that when it does get, like, 65, you're a complete wuss like the rest of us? 
Because when it gets 65, I need like eight jackets. So I'm just wondering, are you? St do you still have that Wichita blood in you that you're like laughing at, at 50 and 60s right now? Honestly, I've never had the Wichita blood in me. <laughs> <laughs> I still wear a hoodie in 75 degree weather. So, I mean, if it's not like 80, I could still wear a hoodie and some sweatpants. I'm not gonna even lie to you. I came to the field today with a hoodie on and it was like 70 degrees out here. So for me, I mean, it's kind of cool, you know, like coming from Wichita and still not being able to handle cold weather is kind of funny to everybody. That is awesome. Jazz Chisholm joining us. Make sure you watch the Marlins, you support the Marlins, you come on out, buy some tickets and cheer on my man Jazz who's gonna have a great season this year. How many home runs? Let's go with 30. Oh, I like it. I gotta like set it. it up there. You got to set it high. I like it. I like it. Jazz, thank you, my man. I wish you the best, my man. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back with more right here on the Big O Radio Show.